Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've actually got a lot of stuff to work on and I'm pretty sick, but there's a bunch of stories to cover, so I thought I'd do a talking head video. Starting with Intel having major issues, Ryzen 7000 is not doing good, RX 7900 price cuts, Nvidia's new GPU is already on sale, and it gets benchmarked. But first, with new CPUs and GPUs coming out, make sure you're ready with Meld Alerts. The completely free sign-up that sends you an email when new PC hardware is releasing. Because let's be honest, keeping up with all the new PC hardware releases can be tricky. And don't worry, I'll only tell you important stuff like CPUs, GPUs, etc. Plus, I'll send you great deals as those come out as well. That way, you won't have to worry when new PC hardware is releasing. So yeah, it's completely free at MeldAlerts.com, and it only takes you a couple seconds. So make sure to check that out below. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, it's looking like Intel is having some major issues with their next-gen Meteor Lake desktop CPUs. Starting things off, as you can see right here, there was a recently leaked roadmap that already points to this. Right here, we have obviously the regular Raptor Lake S that's currently out. Then we have a Raptor Lake S refresh set for release in Q3 of 2023. So where is Meteor Lake? Now, you could just argue that this is a stopgap until we get to Meteor Lake, but some other things point to it potentially being canceled. For example, if we look in this article, you can see that they state, rumors have been swirling for a bit that Meteor Lake, which is primarily fabricated on Intel's next-gen Intel 4 process, wouldn't be able to hit the really high clocks needed for desktop performance. Now, Apparently that would be fine for mobile, but obviously if they plan on competing with AMD's either next-gen CPUs or their X3D parts, they're going to need some high clocks. But it looks like at least so far they aren't able to get there. Then we see here that, oh, Raptor Lake refresh is next, not Meteor Lake. Then the final nail in the coffin comes from known leaker Raichu, who states that Meteor Lake S seems like it may have been cancelled. Now, this may seem like he's not 100% sure, but Raichu has been very accurate with leaks in the past, and obviously he wouldn't say that if he wasn't fairly certain. A lot of leakers don't like to say things in definitive terms just because obviously things can change even if when they said something, it was completely accurate. But of course, based on this, as well as the other information that we're getting from other leaks and rumors, it's not looking good. And that's actually made people think back to when Intel was having major issues getting onto their 10 nanometer CPUs from 14 nanometers. Remember, for many years, the 14 nanometer process was simply revised again and again and again until we're talking like 14 nanometer plus 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 CPUs coming out until they finally released their 10 nanometer parts. But long before that, they released 10 nanometer parts with Ice Lake on mobile. So I definitely am having some flashbacks of Intel having those issues. Hopefully that isn't gonna be the case here, but it's not looking good. And next up for today, it's also not looking good, at least for now, with AMD's Ryzen 7000. If you follow the hardware industry, and of course, if you'd like to do that, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld, but if you've been following along, you know that AMD released their Ryzen 7000 parts and they were fairly impressive. Unfortunately for AMD, Intel then released their 13th gen CPUs and they seem to do even better. Well, it sort of depends on the workloads. They are fairly close. The problem with AMD is that their AM5 boards are really expensive. Not only that, but you don't have an option to get DDR4, so you have to go with the more expensive DDR5. And because of that, it's looking like AMD is isn't doing all that well. When we move down here, we can actually see there's one retailer who is very big on giving out number of sales. Most retailers don't do that, but one in particular definitely does, and that is Mind Factory. And through that, a Reddit thread actually developed that went over all the sales that had been done from MindFactory.de with AMD CPUs, so they were able to see how well Ryzen 7000 was selling compared to Ryzen 5000. And video cards actually updated this even further. As you can see down here, we actually have, as of right now, the most popular CPU, the 600 series, more mid-range parts, which are almost certainly always going to sell more than the higher-end parts just because they're far more expensive. 
but you still get quite a bit of performance out of the mid range. Now, this is on a per day basis. That's how we're able to compare it. Obviously, the total sold is going to be quite a bit more with the 5600X just because it's been out longer, but this is when we compare it to a sold per day basis. And basically from this, for every one 7600X that's sold, 4.2 5600Xs are sold. And I would actually argue that it's probably even worse than that because you typically have some really good sales right when the parts first release. So obviously the 5600X has been out longer than the 7600X, so sales typically will dip a bit. But the 7600X is still very new, so it should be having even more. So in my opinion, this looks even worse than it does right on its face. Not only that, but the 7700X isn't doing all that well either, even though the 7600X has sold more than any other 7000 CPU. Now, you might quickly compare it to the 5700X, and as you can see, it looks like, oh, the 5700X actually sold less, but keep in mind that AMD didn't release a 7800X, which really would be the main one to compare it to. And when we look at that, we can see that the 5800X has sold 2.6 times the 7700X. Then we move up to the 7900X, and it's uh, the 5900X has sold three times more than the 7900X. Then the 5950X, this is actually one where the 7950X has won. But as I said, this is early on. As it gets older, people will probably start buying fewer per day. But as of right now, this is the only chip that's sold better per day than last gen. Basically, though, this is not good for AMD. Clearly, they are having some issues, and obviously that's why they're starting to lower prices. But whether it's helping all that much, we will have to wait and see. But as of now, like I said, it's not looking good. With that said, one thing that is good is that AMD's RX 7900 series of GPUs are starting to drop their prices in Europe, more specifically in Germany. As you can see down here, the 20 gigabyte Sapphire RX 7900 XT has dipped below MSRP down to 999 euros. Now, of course, that doesn't seem like a good deal if you're from the US, but don't forget that there are things like VAT taxes and things like that that European countries have, so their MSRP is higher in the US. Now, as for why, it likely mostly boils down to the uh, exchange rate between the Euro and USD, but keep in mind that if these were selling extremely well, there would be no reason to lower the price even with a better exchange rate between the euro and US dollar. As we saw for years during the pandemic, the MSRP means nothing. They'll not only keep it at the MSRP, but they'll sell it significantly higher. So this still is a drop in price and it still is good news. With that said, as you know, NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Ti is expected to come out very soon, and of course, that 4070 Ti, from everything we've seen, is almost certainly the 12 gigabyte 4080 just repackaged into the 4070 Ti. Either way, it's clear that that card is coming extremely soon because it's already available, at least in Serbia as of now, now, the price is 1,460 euros, and that's obviously because it isn't officially out yet, but clearly it's coming extremely soon because you can buy it right now. Of course, whether you'd want to is obviously up in the air, but I will say it's looking good with this final story. As you can see right here, the 4070 Ti has now been benchmarked, and in fact, it's been benchmarked on Octane Bench. Now, keep in mind that this is a single benchmark, so you obviously want to wait for reviews to come out, but either way, this is definitely interesting. As you can see right here, the 4070 Ti actually beat out the 3090 Ti. Of course, the regular 4080, it did lose by quite a bit, and it only barely beat out the 3090 Ti. But this is really interesting because even if NVIDIA keeps it at the exact same price that the 12 gigabyte 4080 was at, that would actually pit it against the 7900 XT, given they're both $900 GPUs. But hopefully they do actually lower it a little bit, just because once again, the reason people were aggravated about the 12 gigabyte 4080 is because 
it clearly didn't need to be that expensive. Regardless, I also wanted to go over some other benchmarks that were officially done by NVIDIA, and as you can see, we have the 12 gigabyte 4080 right here, and while at least in these benchmarks, it doesn't beat out the 3090 Ti, but it is very close. When we look with DLSS off and all of that, some more of a direct comparison between the GPUs without DLSS 3.0 and all of that stuff, we can see that the 3090 Ti only beat out the 4080 by a single frame per second. So not a big difference at all. Then when we move over here, we can see that, well, here it did lose at least by a bit, but it's still somewhat close to the 3090 Ti. Then in this benchmark, once again, it did lose, but is only three FPS away. And the reason this is a big deal is because it gives us an idea of how the 12 gigabyte 4070 Ti or 12 gigabyte 4080 stacks up against the 7900 XT, which is priced the same, given Nvidia doesn't lower the price, which once again, I definitely hope that they do, but we shall see. And when we look at this, the 7900 XT actually does beat out the 3090 Ti, though, just barely and this is a nine game mean fps so this is not just a single benchmark just like these are a few benchmarks here but it's essentially looking like the 7900 xt could beat the 4070 ti though they're probably going to be fairly neck and neck basically i think it'll mostly boil down to price as to which one you get of course also if you're big into ray tracing you may aim more towards nvidia over amd just because typically their ray tracing does better regardless i think it is going to be interesting to see how these two gpus compare though with that said Given their pricing, it's almost always better to get, say, the 7900 XTX, given that's only $100 more. Of course, if NVIDIA does lower their price for the 4070 Ti, it could end up being a decent buy, but of course, time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, I do apologize for all the rambling. Like I said, I actually got sick. I'm pretty sick right now. I got sick last night, but I do have quite a bit of things to do, so I'm going to power through. Either way, what do you think about NVIDIA's upcoming 4070 Ti? Are you thinking about picking one up, or would you just go for a higher-end GPU? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, if you like the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day.